Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to another Maestro Game Production. And before we get into today's games, we have to catch up on the ones between episodes. So, first of all, we played Liverpool, and it was a nice, comfortable victory for Liverpool. 3 1. Basically, Rian Brewster did Rian Brewster things. He scored a brace, and they won 3 1. Nice to see I Won Yeats got on the score sheet, though, against his former club. We then played Dynamo Kiev, and we seem to have continued this pattern of lose one, win one. So, Luca Mora still in the game on the 89th minute. Nice to see him finally getting some goals. We then went to Chelsea. Now, this was a very close game. So, as you can see, Mora got on the score sheet. They fought back, Abraham equalising before the end of the half. Then they stole it on the 85th. Mora then uh, went and made it worse and got himself sent off. So he is yet again back on a suspension. We then went and played Celtic. This won a very comfortable 1-0 victory at home. And then we get into the last fixture before today's episode. And that was a nice comfortable 2-1 against the likes of Wolverhampton Wanderers. So Gaetano scored a screamer. We then have Pavlovic, who scored a volley. It was quite the nice goal. And then Cody went and got one back for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Also, a little bit of side news. The board decided to up our transfer budget. We had about 9 million left in the bank. They pushed it up to 31. So we do have a couple of players coming in. And you will see those in the second game. I'm going to keep them as a surprise, as I am going to keep this first game a surprise. So without further ado, let's go head to the stadium of our first team. Okay, ladies and gents, welcome to Homes Under the Hammer. No, but if the road hasn't already given away where we are today, we are going to head on down to the ground right now. So let's go down this little road. And as you'll see on the left-hand side, we have our stadium. OAFC. Of course, we are here at the home of Oldham Athletic. So we shall head on down to the front entrance. As you can see, Oldham Athletic here. A very dated stadium, I must say. Here is the Oldham Athletic Community Trust. And here is our giant amount of parking space. So I'm going to go look for a parking spot, and I will see you fine folks in the stadium in just a second. Okay, ladies and gents, so we are finally in the stadium here at Boundary Park for our FA Cup third round game against Oldham. So our team will be Butland in goal, Selic, Burke, Pavlovic and Vigore at the back. We have Dragomir and Palacios in central midfield, Musa on the left, Mahi on the right, Gaetano in central attacking mid and of course David up front. Our bench consists of Pereira, Sutar, Guimeras, Navarro, Batty, Ageria and Luis Porter. Now a lot of those players are coming in Pretty much because we have free suspensions and free injuries. So let's get on with this game. It shouldn't make too much of a difference though. There is a much greater class difference between us and them. And our reserves should be able to do the job. But Carlos thinks we should encourage the players. Get them a bit of a morale boost. Okay, so assertively, now I expect nothing but win. We are favourites here, so go out there and give the fans a performance cheerful while we are away. Ignore the critics and just enjoy yourself. The media have been... Uh, forget the media. We're favourites for a reason. Go out there and make sure they're left in no reason why. Yes, we are the favourites. Now go show them why. So, Georgia Pope, who seems to follow us all around the world. She's from BBC Radio and beside the devious young lady who we have a great respect for. Both teams come into this one in a spell of poor form. Is there therefore a good opportunity to step up and arrest your recent struggles? Well, Georgia, it is a great opportunity to shake off our malice. F find our form, sorry, find our focus and turn around our form. Is Jonathan David fit enough to last the full duration of the match? I've been told he's fit enough. He's fit enough, and if not, we shall substitute him. It's not that difficult. In fact, he's our striker, so he doesn't usually get worn down too much anyways. So let's just swap up the latest scores to the FA Cup, and we are the only game. So that was rather pointless. We've swapped it on to telling us the score we already know, because we're watching the game.
trying to be a bit more delicate with my drink. With it being in a glass bottle, I don't want to be banging on the table next to the microphone. But we have a corner here. Dragomir whips it in, front post, headed away. Musa on the edge of the area though, whips it in. Oh, lovely goal by Musa. What a goal by Musa from the edge of the area. Let's see this screamer once more as he drills it across the face of the goal into the side of the goal. So, takes it on his right hand side and smashes it into the far left. Nice little goal there by Musa. Musa finally making a bit of an impact in this team. And I must say, he's left it a bit late. As you'll see from the new additions in the next game, Musa's probably not going to get a whole lot of game time. At least if I put certain players where I would ideally like them. He'll probably be the backup on that side. But who knows, if he plays well enough, maybe I will move his alternative player to the other wing. And we will be okay with that. But I'm happy with your performance so far, lads. Keep it up. Get back out there and get us another goal. We want to see some more highlights. Not sit and watch this screen, which appears to be not going very far. So, Musa. Musa collects the ball once more. Musa cutting inside. Nice little run by Musa coming down the centre of the pitch. Nobody's tackling him. He's just going to kick it out of the defender. Palacios now to Mahi. Mahi holding the ball up. Will he cross it? No, he's going to win a penalty. And it will be Gaetano stepping up to take the penalty. Can Gaetano slot away a goal here? He is, of course, on the same amount of goals as David. And now he is our top goal scorer. Gian Luca Gaetano with his eighth goal of the season. Like I said, he has now overtaken David on that top goal scorer for us, which is kind of worrying considering he's currently our striker. But not so worrying when we see the additions I will be bringing in for the next match. I'm sure you will all agree the additions will be rather useful in our scoring issues. But Spooner, Spooner tries to whip one up. No. Pavlovic heads it down to Gaetano, Gaetano, and it is high, wide, and not at all handsome. And I was rather tongue-tied for that moment. I'm not quite sure why, but I was. So we have Mahi, who is a little bit complacent. We have David, who is struggling. You know what? Oh, great. I completely forgot I would need is actually not in the lineup because he has an illness. So, who are we going to bring up? You know what? Lewis Parr, how do you feel like going up and being our lone striker today? You can be a poacher. We'll let you be a poacher. We shall then... You know what? I'm going to give Batty a bit of game time. So, which of you two fine folks want to leave? Dragomy, you are the most tired. So, Batty, you can become a supportive central midfielder. And then we shall, I guess, hold on to the third substitute in case anything dramatic and horrible happens, like an injury or a sending off, perhaps. But I don't see either of those happening. They've got a couple of nervous players, one who is anxious slash frustrated. One of the nervous fellows is now fired up. But it looks a little late. We have six minutes, five minutes of normal time, plus any additional minutes added on. We have three. And they are all overwhelmed. That is a nice, comfortable victory here in Oldham. So it's Hull City 2, Oldham nil. We had 23 shots, they had five. Seven on target, they had four. Six total fouls to their seven. Zero yellow, ca zero yellow cards apiece. 46% possession to their 54. Our best player was Musa. One goal and an 8.3 rating as a result. Their best performance was Woods. Their goalkeeper, he made five saves held and a 6.9 as a result. Fatch was their worst performer with a 6.4. No reason for it. Struggling to perform for us, of course, was David. He got a zero overall chances and 6.5 as a result. But that means the player of the match, of course, goes to Ahmed Musa. Finally getting in a bit of form. And Carlos thinks we should... There's nothing particular we need to tell them. Okay, so assertively, well done lads, that was a good win for us. We happily cruise through to the next round of the FA Cup. But without further ado, I will see you fine folks for the second game against Sheffield United at home.
Okay, ladies and gents, so before we get into the last game of today's video and unveil our two new signings, of course, we have the fourth round draw of the FA Cup. So let's see who we get in the FA Cup. So the first team out of the hat will be Peterborough United and they shall come up against Middlesbrough. We then have Queen's Park Rangers. They shall play Liverpool. Tough fixture for Queen's Park Rangers. Crystal Palace will play Brighton and Hove Albion. Watford will play Manchester United. Another tricky fixture for Watford. Portsmouth will play us. Okay, that shall be an interesting one. We do have a little bit of history with Portsmouth in terms of loaning them a lot of players. So Luton gets Fulham, Bournemouth gets Sheffield Wednesday, Forest get West Ham, Norwich against Walsall, Derby County Arsenal, Fleetwood versus Colchester, Manchester City at home against Wolverhampton Wanderers, Preston North End against Leeds United, Huddersfield versus Aston Villa, Leicester will play Brentford and Tottenham is at home to Blackburn. So that concludes today's FA Cup fourth round draw. Now let's get into today's game against Sheffield United and unveil our two new signings. Okay, ladies and gents, it is kickoff time here at the KCOM Stadium, our second game of today's episode. And of course, we are going up against Gattuso and his Sheffield United side. Now, as you may have noticed, our new addition is in the starting lineup. So we have Butland, Selic, Katic, Pavlovic, and Lorenzo. We then have Dragomir and Pearson in central midfield. Musa, Gaetano and David all sit behind our newly acquired Halland. On the bench, of course, is Pereira, Burke, Guimeras, Navarro, Batty, Luis Porter and Egeria. Now, before we have a little look at Halland, we are going to have a little look at our other new addition. Also, on the Sheffield United front, they're having a bit of a goalkeeper issue. I believe their main goalkeeper, or at least he's played just as many games as this guy. They seem to have split it very 50-50. They have a goalkeeper on international duty. So hopefully Halland can get off to a flying start. So Halland, of course, four-star current ability, four-star potential. 22 years old, Norwegian, 36 caps for the national side, 12 goals, three for the under-21s. No goals in those, though. He has a very lovely start. As you can see, he played in the World Cup Euro Qualifier at a 7.33 average rating in that one, and he's valued at 21 million. But I hear you ask, how much did we pay for him? Well, we got him for the bargain basement of 9.5 million from Salzburg. They did acquire him for 7.25, so they've made a bit of profit, but we've still got him at a very nice price. So as you can see, average rating of over 7 in all of his past 4 seasons. Scored 15, 15, 9 and 14 goals respectively in all of those. Now on top of Haaland joining our striking ranks, if I quickly go to the squad screen, we also have Guando, Guindo, Guando, Guindo, Guindo, Guindo makes more sense. He is a 2 star current ability, 3.5, potentially 4.5 star Belgium striker, valued at 10.25, 19 years old, 521 caps and 2 goals in those games. Again, very good rounded stats. He's been playing the Leasing.com trophy at a 7.3 rating in that. Now, he was acquired from Manchester City. They bought him for 2.5, loaned him out for a season and then made a hefty profit of 12.5 million on him. So I did kind of pay a little bit over the odds. But to me, this guy is very much our like-for-like -like replacement for Brewster. Hopefully within a couple of seasons, he can develop reach his potential and we'll have a £60 million striker on our hands. So that was our two acquisitions. That means Iwan Yeet has been unregistered. He is actually looking to go out on loan. We have three offers for him. Mahi is also coming out on loan because we are sending David back to the wing where he belongs. So in that sense, we do have Musa, who is now effectively the backup for David. But since we have a suspension to Mora, it does mean David is swapping to the right-hand side. Musa is getting to stay on the left-hand side for now. And that is our team for today's game. But without further ado, let's go pile on the pressure on Sheffield United. 
So we shall head to the dressing room, talk to good old Carlos, and tell the team that they're expected to pick up where they left off. I think that is reasonable. We are favourites here, so go out there and give the fans a performance to cheer for. Of course, Sheffield United, bottom of the league, if they can somehow upset us today, will be on the same points as 18th place or 17th place. Basically, this is a big game for them trying to stay in the league. Whereas us, it's a big game in trying to get that top half finish which we are required. So, I want you to pick up from where you last left off. And David, Gattuso, Musa and weirdly Halland, who wasn't here last game, have all positively taken that. So, Lewis Russell of 442 Publication, the enthusiastic fellow who we have a great respect for, says, Our Sheffield United have the worst defence in the Premier League. You must consider whole favourites to win. Yes, I do. I think we're the best team by far, and we'll show everyone why. How useful is Lorenzo's versatility? Well, he's a Swiss Army life. Swiss Army life? Swiss Army knife, even. Much as many of our players that I like to bring in tend to be. Because I believe Haaland and the other guy are also pretty useful on the wings if needed to cover over there. But we have Selic dropping back to collect this ball. He's going to play it to Katik. Katik to Dragomir. Dragomir to Musa on this left hand side. Making a lovely cutting run. Plays it across to Pearson. Nice ball up to David. David hits Woods. Gets it back though. David can get on the score sheet. No. And uh, no. <laughs> no he can't. It's a lovely save by Dewhurst, goes back to him and he kicks into the side netting. So, we are going to demand a bit more. Of course, we expect Haaland to have a hat-trick by now. We are 15 minutes into this game. Pearson, Pearson tries to get across in, but it is deflected. Lorenzo drops back to collect this near the halfway line. Pavlovic to Pearson once more. Plays it up to Dragomir, Dragomir to Musa, Musa plays it into Gaetano. Lovely screamer of a shot, but unfortunately sailing wide. We know how deadly he can be from any range. Gaetano, very good in that central attacking midfield role. Going to demand even more, although we are in the middle of the highlights. Dragomir has been pushed over. Musa collects the ball, though. We are playing it on. Pearson tries the ball over the top. Dragomir keeps it in, heads it down to Musa. Musa holds the ball, plays it back to Dragomir. Dragomir has the overlap if he needs. Plays it inside to Gaetano. Back to Pearson, though. Pearson, nice ball over to his left hand side to Musa. Musa holds it up. Can he play in into Halland? Oh, come on, Halland. Erlin Halland. Goal on his debut. Half an hour in, and he's already off to a flying start. That is exactly what we expected from him. Nice little acquisition. Again, only nine and a half million. Even with his agent fee, came in under ten million. So, not a bit, not a bad bit of business, in that sense. Lorenzo is looking a little tired though, as is David. So I will probably be looking to substitute both of those off, considering we do have another midweek game against Aston Villa coming up after this one. So, Pavlovic coming down this right hand side, plays it back to Lorenzo. Lorenzo, who I have previously mentioned is a little bit tired, plays it to David. David coming down this right hand side, has Lorenzo if he needs, plays it into Gaetano, and it's a lovely header. Unfortunately, sails over the bar. So, it is 1 0 at half time. Hull City 1, Sheffield United 0. Erlin Halland with the goal splitting the teams. 16 shots to their 1, 6 on target to their 1. 2 total fouls to their 13, 0 yellow cards piece, 42% possession to their 58. Erlin Halland was our best performer, 1 goal and a 7.3 rating. Oliver Norwood for them was their best performer with a 6.9 and a 100% passing completion ratio. Gaetano is our struggling performer with a 6.3, 0% shots on target ratio. Mayoral was struggling for them with a 6.4 and no reason for it. Liverpool is of course 2-0 up away to Bournemouth. Manchester United is 4-0 up at home to Fulham. And Tottenham is 0-0 against Aston Villa. So let's encourage the team according to Carlos. And I think that seems reasonable. Um, things are going well, but I know you're capable of better. We have the win. I can't be too harsh on them, but we expect a little bit better. We're playing bottom of the league. We should get a nice, comfortable victory here. I would expect a 3 or 4-0 win 
playing bottom of the league. So Musa, Musa has overlap with Selic, comes inside on his own, and he almost scores a lovely goal. Musa is really doing his best to stay in the team now he's seen the two striker acquisitions I've made. Knowing that David can happily slot into his position. But speaking of slotting in, Pote is going to come on for David, who is of course a little bit tired. We then have Guimaraes coming on for Lorenzo. Selic can swap to that right hand side, which he actually prefers. And that will be our two substitutions. We shall hold on to the third one for now. Demand a bit more. Everyone is focused up, of course. And Stevens. Stevens throws it into Norwood. Norwood to Stevens. Coming down this left hand side. Tries to play it across to Norwood. Norwood tries it over on the right hand side now. They couldn't find a hole on that side, so they decided to swap to the other end of the pitch. Now Sheffield United going backwards at the halfway line. Play all the way back to Dewhurst in goal. He's getting charged down. He gets it away though. Gives it straight to Selick who heads it back to Woods. Woods now playing it up to Norwood. Back to Woods once more. Sheffield United seem to be going back towards their own goal a bit more than towards ours at the moment. But they are of course still in possession. Headed down. Elliot has the ball now. Edge of the area. He has space. Our defender has given him plenty of space. Luckily, he has not taken advantage of it. I believe that was Katik who went and stood out of the way to let him walk by. So, Katik, maybe don't do that in future. I don't appreciate it. We are, of course, coming to the end of today's game. So, let's give Gaetano. I want to say Gattuso for some reason. Gattuso is their manager. We're not playing with Gattuso, we're playing against him. Gaetano. We're going to give Gaetano a rest. Dragomir to Selic. Selic to Gaetano. Gaetano. Lovely ball. Cross field. Woods gets it away though. And it goes straight to Pavlovic. Pavlovic is just going to casually collect this one down on the right hand side of the pitch. And run it up. Apparently he thinks he's a winger now. Tries to get it to Haaland but it does not. Mumbai, Mumbamba gets it to Batum. Batum kicks it up. We have Elliot once more on the attack. Elliot is looking rather dangerous. Offer then is finishing. He's making some lovely runs and then kicking it into the crowd. But we have a nervous Musa. Not sure why he's nervous. Other than the fact, of course, David might be taking his position now. But in terms of performance, he's got 6.7. He has no reason to really be that nervous. Musa, pick up your mentality, my friend. So it is 1-0 here at the K-Com Stadium. Erlen Halland getting the one and only goal. We had 33 shots, they had 7. We had 11 on target, they had 3. 5 fouls to 22. Zero yellow cards to their 2. 48% possession to their 52. Erlen Halland, of course, was our best performer. Got one goal and a 7.5 as a result. Nathan Woods, for them, was their best performer. He got 7 rating. Gattuso was our worst performer. He got a zero shots on target ratio and a 6.5 as a result. Struggling for them was Stebbins. He got five mistakes and a 6.5 as a result. That means our player of the match, of course, goes to Holland on his debut. Carlos thinks we don't need to address anything particular after that, and I don't too. We had a lovely game. Well done, lads. That was a good win. Nice Little victory at home against Sheffield. And we are now up into ninth place. Of course, Fulham has a game in hand. They can get up to 22 points. So we're basically 10th. Of course, we're level on points with Tottenham. So we're not doing too bad, I guess. We're performing on the same level as Tottenham. And that is nothing to be shunted at, considering we did lose Brewster. At the start of the season, him of course going to start with Liverpool. And you know what, let's go check in on Brewster before we end today's episode. Let's see how he's getting on. Martinez seems to have come back into the first team in his spot. So how is he doing as the backup? So, his story. Of course, he scored 16 goals for us, 23 goals, and then 42. He's currently got 3 goals from 7. So, he's performing reasonable I guess he's got a better average rating than the first two seasons definitely doing worse than last season but 
he's doing okay, I guess. He'd be doing a lot better with us, because of course he'd be starting every game and he'd be on about 50 goals by now. But it was his choice, of course, to go back home to Liverpool, and we can't begrudge that too much. But where shall we return for the next episode? That is the question. So we've got games against Aston Villa, Brighton, Manchester City. We're on a long away run here. Brighton down to Birmingham are all away games. I think what we'll do is come back for the FA Cup against Portsmouth and a nice little game against Birmingham. So I thank you all for watching today's episode. I hope to see you for that episode in the future and I hope you all have a nice night. Goodbye.